Hello, welcome to 30 Minutes. I'm Rick Anthony. Tis the season for peace on earth, goodwill towards men, and another season for Derek Fiorenza and his Food for Friends campaign, an annual blessing of nutrition and warmth for hundreds of people who are down and out in the Philadelphia area. This is an encore appearance for Derek. He was here last year to tell us his remarkable story, and we invited him back this year to see uh, how much bigger his initiative has become, and then again, hundreds of people who benefit from it in the area. Not only those who receive the food and benefit from that, but the number of volunteers who join with him every year uh, to spread the cheer. Derek. Rick, thanks. Good to be with you again. Thanks very much for coming in again. I was really impressed last year with what you had accomplished in a relatively short period of time and with very limited resources. But as you, know, you were telling me before we got started on the air, uh, there is real m momentum now with not only a number of uh, additional people involved, but hopefully some financial resources rolling in. So you're able to help more people. And I know that has been your mission. Uh, you might explain uh, on a two shot what these mess, these, uh, there we go, what these uh, symbols are behind us. So this is our organization. Uh, last year when we were starting up, we were not a nonprofit organization. This year we are a 501c3 mm -hmm. nonprofit organization. We were incorporated in the spring. The name of the organization is Fiorenza's Food for Friends. And these are the t shirts that we used last year for the volunteers when they served. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of momentum, there has been a, a huge shift in terms of awareness in our organization and also hunger in general. Mm -hmm. More people are in the homeless shelters this year compared to last. In fact, one of the uh, shelters that we served last year in Pittsburgh has 150 people shelter. Now this year it's 250 people. Wow. So A direct result of the economy? I don't know if it's a direct result of the economy or... Well, are you seeing more families than individuals? I think it's a mixture. I, um, mm. We haven't actually been out in terms, this is the first, this week we're starting. Yeah. So the 18th to the 23rd, it's now expanded from a three-day operation to a six-day operation. Uh -huh. So we'll have a better idea once we hit the ground. Let's back up a little bit and give our viewers uh, a, a bit of history. Let's start with who you are, where you come from, uh, and how you became involved in this project. Sure. Well, I grew up in Downingtown, Chester County area, and um, Ever since I was young, my family got me involved. My parents, my sisters, we all got involved and served at different soup kitchens as a family. And then when I went to school, grade school, at St. Aloysius Academy right here in Bryn Mawr, mm -hmm. uh, the value of service and character formation were key. And that kind of um, carried over to Bishop Shanahan High School in mm -hmm. Downingtown, where we really, the emphasis was placed on caring for others, giving back, community, sharing of yourself, mm -hmm. giving yourself to others. And then when I went to Villanova University as an undergrad, then it really just hit, started peaking. And mm -hmm. it really got me interested in wanting to give back and make a difference in this world. And I started changing my mindset to what's really important. You know, we're here for a short amount of time and I want to leave a legacy. I want to inspire others. I want to create hope mm -hmm. for those that have none. And um, then that carried over. I was playing football at Villanova as a walk-on student there, a kicker and punter. And then I continued my career out in California University of Pennsylvania out in Pittsburgh. I was a punter there for three years on their football team. Mm -hmm. And um, the events in terms of serving really started as an undergrad at Villanova. In 07, we, um, December of 07 was our first year of serving. And we served 25 meals. And then gradually each year it increased from 50 to 100. Then last year we did over 1,000 meals. This year we're positioned to serve 2,200 meals next week. In how many cities? <laughs> well, there's three major cities, yeah. um, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and New York, but 20 th essentially 23 shelters mm -hmm. and um, nine different counties. So the operation has expanded, and then going through our numbers of the day, we're approaching 25,000 meals served for the year across 14 wow. states. 14 states? 14 states. Wait, 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 wait. How does that work? Well, we, um, one, of the, one of the goals of, of the program, we, we have a couple of principles we kind of follow, but the... Uh, one of the major goals is to create awareness. That's right. first and foremost. O awareness of the need. Of the need of hunger, of poverty, of homelessness. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, if they know about it, um, they're not doing something about it, or if they mm -hmm. don't know about it, they can't help. So we're trying to create awareness, first and foremost. And then we want to inspire others to take action. So it's twofold purpose. One is to create awareness. Right. Two is to inspire action. 
And then once they are committed, they volunteers, people want to get involved, then I want to provide them an avenue mm -hmm. to use their energies mm -hmm. and resources. I'm still a little confused. Since last year, are you saying it has exploded from a two-city, maybe three-city, to a 14-city, did you say, or 14-state? Well, state? 14 different states. States. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's a huge network. How many volunteers does that represent? We've had a good amount of volunteers, um, primarily for this holiday meal coming yeah, up. Yeah. Um, we were fortunate to receive some donations from some large companies, Campbell's uh, Soup, mm -hmm. made a huge donation to our organization, and we gave that to a food bank in Detroit, Michigan. Mm -hmm. And then we also received some um, donations and cans from other companies that we were able to then transport down to the Gulf Coast. Mm -hmm. I drove with my grandfather down south and delivered mm. 600 cans to different states along the way. Oh, so that's how you're doing it. You're using right. existing distribution centers and so you're providing them with the food. There's food banks and food pantries right. throughout the country. Right. And what we're trying to do, we've kind of taken our initial plan, which was to serve warm meals around the holidays. Mm -hmm. And we've kind of said, how can we provide a more sustainable effort year round? Mm -hmm. And one of the easiest ways to do it is through non-perishable food drive collections. Mm -hmm. And as opposed to trying to distribute <coughs> all of them, mm -hmm. we're partnering with local food pantries and food banks mm -hmm. and giving them the donation of cans. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to reach out to food banks and food pantries across the country to create that relationship mm -hmm. so that down the road, the ultimate goal would be to create an F4 chapter in every major city of the country. So every state, 50 states, mm -hmm. we're going to have a presence. And when I send out the email blast or make the phone calls and say, in the month of February, we're going mm -hmm. to do a non-perishable food drive with local businesses. Mm -hmm. Somebody out in California will say, okay, I'm going to reach out to my local business community. Let me just make an observation and ask a question. It seems to me, I mean, we've noticed, for example, uh, we, some of the restaurants we go to, uh, not just here, but up in the mountains, uh, up in the Poconos, uh, they have, they sponsor uh, donation programs, bring a can or some cans of something or other, and you'll get a free drink or a half price on a meal or something. There seem to be a number of those campaigns. Uh, do you get to the point where the, the, the uh, public are confused by the number of appeals and wondering where does all this stuff go and which of the several that are making appeals are not only legitimate but are really doing good work and are not wasting resources. Well, that's a really good question, and um, one, I think it's good if people are really starting to become aware, obviously, if there's yeah. that many drives, it's creating awareness, and that's, that's key. In terms of utilizing resources, though, mm -hmm. that's a good question. We are a nonprofit organization now. We don't mm -hmm. have anybody that's paid, so any mm -hmm. of the donations, we don't have paid staff, and it's my goal to, as long as I'm running it, be able to make enough money in my for-profit mm -hmm. jobs to be able to not have to ever take a salary from mm -hmm. the nonprofit. Now, who knows what could happen in the future, but that's the goal. And I think that separates us from other organizations that obviously have an overhead, you have to pay salaries. Yeah. Yeah. So when someone is helping us out with either a volunteering or mm -hmm. a, a donation of resource, they can be assured it's going to the people in need. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know you tried, I think I understand, that you try to use, again, a, existing distribution networks to get the food where it belongs. In addition to what you do and when you started, going out yourself with a, a handful of people and distributing the food yourself. Again, the stories we've been hearing recently, for example, about the number of veterans, for example, who are coming back and are living under bridges and in deplorable conditions given the service that they provided this country. Do you see uh, evidence of that as well? A lot of the, um, the aid that we provided yeah. this year has mm -hmm. primarily been through non-perishable food drives. Yes. So I haven't been in the homeless shelters as much until, of course, this week coming up. Mm -hmm. A lot of it's been just <clears> collecting <throat> food mm -hmm. and dropping up a food pantry. So I haven't personally seen that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that when I get to the shelters next week, I mean, we're serving 2,200 meals, 23 shelters. I'm yeah. sure we're going to see some people that have come back from the military, all kinds of people. I told you last year there was doctors, lawyers, accountants yes. that were in there. and um, So homelessness really doesn't have a a set person, no, or it's, it's, it could be any one of it's us. It's agnostic. Yeah, yes. it doesn't discriminate any, at all. It could be any one of yes. us. Uh, uh, lest I give the wrong impression, uh, we're talking about the drive you have right now for the holiday season. Mm -hmm. But this is a 12-month, year-round initiative or effort, right? 
Right, so that comes into the planning and um, different different endeavors that we take on throughout the year. Mm -hmm. We'll do non-perishable food drives, which will be a month long, and we'll pick three to four months of the year where we'll say we're going to focus on rounding up local business, mm -hmm. building partnerships and relationships, and collecting food for the local pantries and food banks. This event here is special. It's a warm meal. We started this, like I said, five years ago mm -hmm. on a small scale. Now it's gone from 25 meals to 2,200 meals. And one shelter to 23. So this is an, a really special event and it's hopefully it'll provide the individuals that are in these homeless shelters mm -hmm. um, just some inspiration, positive reinforcement, belief in themselves. We want to get to the root of the causes of what hunger, homelessness, poverty is. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's not going to happen overnight. But I think the first step towards curing it, and I do believe this in my heart, comes with compassion and care. And mm -hmm. When you care about others and you're compassionate, it shows. It comes through. It comes through in your actions. Mm -hmm. I've told you this before, that the biggest differences in life are made through the smallest actions. And our key motto is, you know, service, integrity, and hope because we care. Mm -hmm. We try to provide service with integrity to inspire others, you know, and we do that because we care. We care about people. Are you finding it that other families are joining your family in this campaign? That goes to the volunteers. The volunteer yes. support this year has been unbelievable. Really? Unbelievable. We've probably doubled. I don't have an exact count on how many mm -hmm. volunteers we have this year, but probably doubled. And the amount of families that have gotten involved and said, Derek, I'd like to put together my uh, children and my wife. Yeah. It's yeah. Been, and my cousin, my sister's like, wow. It's just, so the idea of people want to help. Yeah. And that's why I feel that as I'm growing this, I need to keep that in mind that now we're creating the awareness. We're inspiring others to mm -hmm. take action. Mm -hmm. Now it becomes giving them an avenue to mm -hmm. be able to help and give back. And that's going to be the, the key part here going forward is have to continue to kind of get creative mm -hmm. and um, strategically grow it. Are you still working with Villanova? Villanova, yeah. Villanova, obviously my alma mater. I have a tremendous amount of love and respect for the university. They've been supportive um, since day one as mm -hmm. an undergrad, whether that be in terms of... Uh, but what about the students? Are they involved? The students are actually, we got the students involved this uh, past fall. I got them involved in a canned food drive on campus. Mm -hmm. I'll be picking them up this weekend, but they, all the students got involved. Mm -hmm. They pitched in and mm -hmm. they uh, helped out with a canned food drive. D describe the logistics. Uh, let's talk about Pittsburgh, for example. And New York must be fascinating, but let's talk about Pittsburgh. Uh, you're here, it's there. It's <laughs> a, th a six hour drive? At uh, least. Thereabouts? At least. So, what do you do? You load a truck and take the food out there? Um, or is it trucked for you? No. Well, here's how it works. When I work with a, um, a shelter for a warm meal, I usually will partner with a restaurant, mm -hmm. and I'll ask a restaurant to donate X amount of meals mm -hmm. for the population and the uh, shelter. Well, the case in Pittsburgh, I uh, reached out to a restaurant out there, and they're going to be donating X amount of meals. Okay. And when I get out there, I'll drive out there, and I'll pick them up in my car. Mm -hmm. And I'll go to the shelter, and then our volunteers will meet us there, and we'll serve them. Mm -hmm. So that's how that works. Um, the relationships that I've cultivated with some of the restaurants and some of the local um, businesses have been tremendous. Yeah. I mean, a big support of ours has been the Rose Group in Newtown. The Rose Group, uh, they own Applebee's in this area. And oh, they okay. help us out tremendously. The uh, restaurant in Havertown, in uh -huh. Thorndale, uh, Prickyoma Valley, Reading, 